welcome back to the Better Men, Better Ball Player podcast. I'm your host, Trey Cobb. I want to thank you for joining us here on our 56th episode. And we're going to continue with the theme of our great assistant coaches with Andrew Koalo. Coach Koalo is a VIPA assistant coach at Potomac State Community College. Uh, he is also the director of baseball operations for PBR for the state of Pennsylvania and New York. Coach Qualo, a uh, former player in Potomac State as well as Liberty University, was also a former assistant coach at VMI. And um, just a blue-collar guy, you know, extremely dedicated, compassionate uh, about teaching the game. And... Um, Got to know Coach Koala just through recruiting um, and following them on Twitter uh, as he got his new job with PBR. And um, just really excited um, to bring him on to discuss um, the stuff, the, the great things that they're doing with PBR. Um, you know, just and it just really, for me, just pointed out like I think the type of person he is. like being a younger guy, and this is a young up-and-coming coach, um, to get a director of baseball job for PBR right now, which uh, which these guys are booming. For people that don't know, PBR is prep base, baseball reports, and you know these, these guys specialize in recruiting, uh, it's a recruiting service, um, putting on events to help kids get recruited and get noticed, and a very reputable company. And, um, you know, COVID was very good. Uh, to these guys, these are guys, like my buddy Wolf said, they were the only game in town, and um, at some point, and so th- they blew up, and now they're we're getting into draft league, um, and a part of that, and these guys are just incredible. So, Coach Koala is is is, is right in the mix of this, and uh, in, into hu- two huge states in the country for PBR in uh, New York, Pennsylvania, and he's traveling both through on top of his duties um, that he's doing with Potomac State, and still invested into their program and, you know, knowing Coach Little and the type of program they run, to have a guy like Coach Koala is um, very telling, uh, especially just, like I said, being a, a younger coach. But, um, you know, really excited. We, we touch base in with the recruiting. We touch base on um, PBR and, and their, their role and then his role of, of assistant coach and how they kind of do things at Potomac State. And uh, just a just a great a great talk uh, talk with a good baseball guy and um, really can't thank him enough. So again, um, assistant coach Andrew Koala from Potomac State Community College and the director of baseball PBR in Pennsylvania, New York. So here he is, Coach Koala. My my story is not too much different similar to that you know happened to be seen on a by chance by coach little and you know it all played out and he kind of told me the way that their program works and the opportunities that they provide after you know your two years there and that sounded like the best thing in the world to me at the time and um you know it was me and my mom and we i kind of told her like this sounds like something i'd like to do and she's always just kind of let me make my own decisions. And for whatever reason, it worked out. And, and it was a great time. And I loved my two years there. And part of the reason I'm back there now, you know, as, as an assistant coach is because I love the program. And it's done so much for me. And it's like my way of kind of giving back to everything it's given me. Mm, absolutely, man. I love how PBR is, like, just starting to really get into JUCO stuff, man. Like, they're really taking off with like getting into Juco stuff, man. Yeah. So is that, like, is that like a, is that something that you, uh, I mean, is that, is that something from like just the whole, a whole, their whole program trying to get into, or is that something like guys like yourself? I don't know. Kyle, Kyle Campbell's a Dundalk guy, um, right. you know, Juco guy. So is that something that just maybe just locally here, or is that something that PBR is trying to do? I think it's a state by state or maybe a regional thing. Um, so like with PBR, Pennsylvania, New York, the guy who's pretty much in charge in New York, his name's Jared Carrier. Uh, he coaches at Sullivan Community College right up, right up in New York area, right outside of the city. 
So he's a big JUCO guy, I believe, played junior college. Um, Dan Savit, the president, was a junior college coach for a couple of years up in New York, I believe, at Corning Community College. You also have myself, um, Zach Guth, who's one of our advanced scouts, played at Hartford Community College. Max Schrantz, who's our uh, director of strategic initiatives. He just got hired on with me here. He played at Mercyhurst Northeast. So we all have JUCO ties. Mm-hmm. And, and like they're kind of, you know, not neglected, but we definitely want to help them as much as we can and, and having scout days with them and getting out to cover their games to kind of promote their guys because of the platform we have. So um, I think it's, you know, with our two states, especially, and like you said, Virginia and Maryland, they're, they're doing their best to cover them as well. Yeah, it's just uh, – and I think it's so, it goes so unnoticed. You think of guys recruiting and getting their names out there. It's like people forget about, the, like, well, did you – that's exactly why people go JUCO mm-hmm. to go get looked at them. And so I just think, like, man, like, PBR is just blowing up. Like, COVID was almost great for you guys. Like, I feel like COVID, like, PBR, like, just blew up. COVID blew them up because they were probably right. the only game in town, like, really doing an awesome job. Like, you guys were able to maneuver, I guess, just because of where you guys are kind of sanctioned and what you were doing. But, man, like, I was like, these guys. And now you're doing all this Juco stuff. I just – it's it's great, man. You guys are booming. It's great. You know, and then you got – you just – you got hired on there, what was it, December last December, year? yeah. This – yeah, just about a couple months ago. Um, this is like my fourth or fifth month in it, and um, kind of new to it, but learning learning the ropes and trying to figure out along along the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if you like? So, um, what drew you to like PBR and like just trying to take care? Like, you know, you're taking over the. I mean, PA and North, North Carolina, it's got to take some really big responsibilities. You know, what kind of drew you to doing something like that? Well, I think it all started getting in at Potomac state and my little connection with Josh Kirkendall who runs West Virginia, who, um, you know, reached out to me a few summers ago about helping him with uh, different events. Mm -hmm. And that just led to connections, which is, you know, the baseball world meeting different people. Uh, Josh and I worked the Pennsylvania state games last June in the middle of COVID and met Dan Savit, who's the president of Pennsylvania, New York, and just kind of, you know, created a little bit of a relationship there. And then about this past fall, Dan reached out to me, kind of explaining that he's looking to hire on a couple guys to kind of take over the reins a little bit and um, take over some responsibilities for both states. And honestly, at the time, I thought I was set on coaching and loved my time at Potomac State and thought that's what I wanted to do. And I told him pretty much like, thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, And the more I thought about it and had different people kind of reach out to me saying, Hey, you might want to reconsider this, you know, because it's, it's a, it's a good position. That's um, in two of the biggest States that PBR has. And it would be, uh, you know, not just look good on a resume, but it'd be great experience to, to kind of get under your belt. So um, Dan and I talked a couple of different times and, you know, just kind of told each other what we would need to, to make it work. And we, we settled on a, you know, made it work and found a deal and, here I, here I am now today, the director of baseball for PBR Pennsylvania in New York and loving every minute of it. Yeah, so. for sure. So, like, what does all that, like, you know, entail, you know, like how you are trying to help out um, these players get noticed? Yeah, so it, uh, this past three or four months since I've started have been pretty hectic. Uh, we run a ton of events in the preseason, which is January and February. And that's a combination of scout days with, with travel organizations where we'll go to a facility and that they have, they bring in their players and, you know, we have all the technology as far as track man and blast motion and, you know, video and laser timers and all kind of stuff. That's kind of top of the line. And we bring these kids in and put them through workouts and, um, you know, we've seen probably over 1,500 kids in the last two or three months in, in between the two states, which is they kind of all start to run together because um, there's so many kids. But, yeah. um, you know, certain kids stand out for sure. And um, like I was on the phone today with a kid's dad, um, just wanting some information. And he started to explain his son. And I pulled up his video and remembered the kid exactly. Um, mm-hmm. it, was a, it was a video of him. And I remember being there at the event. But, yeah, so. Between scout days and then our, we had preseason all state events, which are a sort of like qualifying event for our big state games that we hold each year. 
um, up in Dubois, Pennsylvania, which has gotten a lot of attention over the last couple of years and has grown to, you know, 400 to 500 players. And it's, it's really good, really good talent. That's what I worked last year. And I was blown away with the amount of pitching and, uh, you know, big time bats that came through there. I, I don't know if I saw a, a pitcher under 85 the, the whole week I was there. Wow. Um, and these are high school kids and, uh, it's, uh, it's a big time event. A lot of kids have had, you know, success and have gotten big time offers just from attending and um, getting recognized at that specific event. So there's a, there's a ton that we do a um, bunch of different ways to, to be seen by us um, throughout, throughout the whole, the whole year. And how do you, and how is this, how is this new initiative with the, with, well, I guess you can speak on, I guess you can only speak on kind of our area, but the initiative of JUCO, you know, is it something new, like a JUCO coach is pretty receptive to it? Um, or is it, are you just not really in, involved? Is it, but like, I'm just, just wondering how that's going with the new initiative of, cause it's JUCO. Yeah, it, it's new. Um, like I mentioned on like scout days that we do with travel teams, we're starting to do the same thing now with, with junior college teams. Nice. Uh, um, so we'll go to their field, take our technology with us and run their players through a workout just like we would and maybe even watch an inter squad game and, and get some in-game data and, and some evaluations and stuff like that. Um, you know, junior college kids, unless they're putting up unreal numbers – and they're, you know, in the top of the entire country. Sometimes they kind of float under the radar. So sometimes being put out on our platform that is followed by hundreds of different college coaches across the country, you know, they can not even leave their couch and just look on their phone and see a kid's 88 to 90, you know, with a certain spin rate or something that maybe they're looking for that our track man technology can provide that they never even knew the kid existed. Mm. And they just stumble across them and, and that's kind of becoming more popular nowadays. Um, you know, the amount of direct messages I get on Twitter and, and Instagram and stuff like that about kids that maybe I've posted about or PBR has posted about coaches just trying to get more information of, you know, kids that they haven't been able to see in person but are able to see because they're being promoted through social media right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just blowing up man i think it's just great for kids i think it's great for our area for sure it's just because there's so many juco i region 20 juco is good um just you just give the light of, of of all those great players that are there um beyond just the great stuff that we do in high school you know i just think it's just i think it's a great platform it's great to see that that's getting used for those juco kids yeah no doubt i mean it, it really wasn't a thing even a few years ago it wasn't know, I, at all right you're right i i left junior college in the spring of 2015 was my final year and i don't even know if i had a twitter account then mm -hmm. uh, it was it was kind of new and it hadn't been realized that, that was a way to basically promote kids and promote talent to people anywhere anywhere in the world anywhere in the country um you know so it's uh it's a huge benefit and, and we do our best. Our social media right now is, you know, a big priority for us. And we try and put as much content out there and quality content at that. I mean, you see sometimes people posting about kids that, you know, maybe they're fudging the numbers a little bit. Um, the one thing about us is I feel like our numbers are very true and, and backed up with, with technology and data and video and, you know, quality people, quality baseball people putting out that content where it can be, you know, trusted where, you know, you don't have somebody saying, Oh, this kid throws 90 when he's 82, 83. Right. Um, you know, it's the last thing you want to do. You lose your reputation by, by doing things like that. And um, you know, that's kind of one thing that we have kind of prided ourselves on. And with the new technology that we use with the track man, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it picks up stuff that the human eye doesn't even see. You know, I think a ball's breaking like a curveball would, but on the track, man, the way that it, it's picking up the spin, it's actually moving like a slider. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of maybe goes to show that maybe my eyes aren't the greatest, but um, it, it's a whole new level of the game that's starting to come out. And honestly, I was way behind the times for, for the last six months or so since, since track man's kind of started to take over in PBR, I didn't understand it until 
here recently where I've started to kind of dive in a little bit deeper to, to get a better understanding of it so that I don't feel behind and left out. Um, mm-hmm. Cause it's kind of taken over it's in, in the big leagues. It's in pretty much every division one college stadium. Um, it's, it's the newest and greatest and most reliable source of understanding how the ball's moving. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, we can roll into that. Cause I, I mean, well, first off, the first question I ask is, you know, coach little, um, I'm not, he, he likes his t- structure uh, yes. and he likes, you know, he's done it a long time, been very successful. So how, how is that something that you've been able to uh, touch base with him about? Is that something that, is he interested in anything like that at all? He definitely is. He's definitely open to it. I think one thing that may help him is he's got a son right now who's 18 and a freshman on our team. Um, so he, he kind of keeps him young and keeps him up to date with maybe some of the things that he wouldn't be up to date with, um, and kind of is able to understand it a little bit better. Um, he, he definitely understands it. it's not, you know, 10, 15 years ago where the game was much different. Um, you know, he's, he's a big Twitter guy. I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, yeah. sure oh, yeah. do, but he loves he loves Twitter. Um, him and I constantly send back and forth different videos. We see, um, just kind of, you know, throwing ideas out there. Um, he definitely still has his old school ways, which I believe are super valuable because without him, you kind of lose, lose control of a team. Um, the discipline side is you you can't overlook it. And and that's something that'll never lack as long as he's in charge. Um, but as far as the the technology and the new school stuff, that's kind of coming into play he's definitely open to it because, you know, for doing it for 30 years or so now, um, I'm sure he's gone through different phases of new things being integrated into baseball and he's not unused to it. Um, so this is just another wave of, of technology or a new wave of a system coming in that he's learning to adjust to and incorporate into, into the team. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said too, maybe it'll validate his eyes or show him something maybe that he hasn't seen or maybe that right. his eyes don't see. Yeah. And there's so many different levels. I mean, there, there's schools, there's schools who are completely bought into technology is the only way and the way, and it works for some places and it doesn't work for others. There's some places who don't use it whatsoever. And, you know, it's starting to become, if you don't use it, you're falling behind a little bit. And that's kind of the reason that I bought in was because at first I was kind of against it um, because I grew up playing, I wouldn't say in such an old school way, but that's kind of the way that things were when I was coming up. The the technology hadn't really become big, uh, but nowadays you, you got to have it. And it's, it's a huge benefit too, if you actually understand how to use it and how it can help your players. Oh yeah, not for sure. It's it sometimes that it just gets there a little bit faster, you know, for sure. Yeah, it's always a trickle down effect. I mean, whatever happens in the big leagues trickle, trickles down to college and, and down to high school and then down to the down to the little league levels. And you know, it's it's uh, it's just the way it's been for for mm-hmm. a long time. So. No, for sure, man, for sure. So I'm just thinking of like, um, you know, your with your job at PBR, you know, being the head of baseball operations. And so, how have you know you're you're basically? I would be assuming that you help kind of structure the workouts from here's what we're going to do the 60 here's what we're going to do infielders while these guys are going to be doing this so like you're planning a lot of these things right you're planning your most events or your workouts yes yes then, so so then how has your time as an assistant with coach little kind of helped you become you know an ideal candidate for that job it's with coach little, there's a lot of the similar stuff that gets done, um, year in and year out, you know, you're going to cover your bunk coverage. You know, you're going to do your first and third, you know, you're going to do, you know, hitting groups and defensive groups. Um, you know, there's, like you said earlier, there's been such a structure to go off of, um, and then jump into PBR you go to a different facility every week, it seems like, and they're all set up different. You have, you have different accesses to, to different parts of the field. It's more of on the fly. You know, the way that you may be playing it in your head prior to the event is never the way it ends up turning out. 
Um, but it's a good challenge and, and being a baseball guy and having the help of other guys along with the, the PBR staff that have been doing it a lot longer than I have um, really helps. I mean, they, they throw different ideas at me that, you know, when we're crunched for time and maybe we only have a three hour time slot to do a certain amount of things, they're like, okay, we can use this half of the field to do this while we're doing something else over here. And it makes the entire event run so much smoother and more efficiently that I honestly wouldn't have thought about on my own. Um, I mentioned Jared Carrier earlier. He is, he's a wizard um, with events. He, he could, he could make a, a shoe box and run a, run an event in a shoe box if he had to. He, he's really good at, um, you know, planning stuff out and he's been doing it for a long time. I don't know what the number of years he's been running events between PBR and other, other services are, but he is, He's the guy that kind of makes things run and gives us the ideas that that help both states look as successful as they are. Mm. So um, it's been a big learning experience in the last five months. You know, not to knock Penn or not to knock PBR West Virginia at all, but West Virginia is just a much smaller baseball state and an athletic state in general mm -hmm. um, compared to New York and Pennsylvania that are ginormous, tons of pop tons of people, big population. And, and, you know, I'd only really ever run events in West Virginia where they're kind of low stress. We know we have, have so many kids, we've got a big facility. We're going to get everything done on time. No problem where you go up to, you know, Long Island, New York, where space is hard to come by because mm -hmm. uh, it's a city and, and you got to run an event. And, you know, I, there's a, you have to look at it. There's a event they ran last fall on the top of a building that they turfed the top of a building and netted and they ran an entire PBR event. in I believe it was New York city or right outside in the city. Wow. Um, it was a really cool event. Um, they should probably go back and do it again. Cause it's a, a, a neat place to go, but it's basically a, a turfed field on top of a, not a skyscraper, but a pretty big building. Wow. That's wild, man. Yeah, there's there's pictures of it. Um, and I believe it was right outside of New York City. So it's it's uh, you never know what you're going to get. Um, planning is is huge. Uh, that's maybe one thing that I had learned from not just Coach Little, but every coach that I've I've been around is how important planning and preparation is um, prior to trying to tackle a big event or a big task. Um, just showing up and trying to wing it doesn't always work. You got to have, got to have your ducks in a row prior to, to showing up and having everything organized. For sure. For sure. Now I think, you know, like I said, just knowing coach little and the kind of program he runs, I'm sure just being an assistant coach in that program would definitely get you ready for that. Are there parts of, um, you know, how, how does he allow you to do that? How does he, how does he let you get part of that structure? Does he give you 30 minutes do you guys have a conversation at the beginning of the week? Or is it just like day by day? How do you guys run that? Him and I have uh, an amazing relationship. Um, you know, it started, it would have been the fall of 2012, I believe, the first time I met him. So almost 10 years ago, we met for the first time. And I don't know, there was just something about him where I respected him big time. And I think maybe it took a little bit of time for him to completely earn my respect but nowadays you know he trusts me um to kind of handle what what i'm good at um and he he understands like you know i have the energy i have the the time and the energy and the passion to want to do early work with infielders and early work with outfielders and and hit late at night with the guys in the cage till 11 and 12 o'clock you know at night just because I enjoy it. You know, I enjoyed it as a player and I, I still enjoy it as a coach. Um, he pretty much gives me free reign. Occasionally he'll reel me in if I get a little bit too much out of control, but, <laughs> but he, uh, he's given me pretty much free reign as far as, you know, any drill that I want to run or anything that, that I think uh, will help the help the team and help the guys individually. Um, you know, he, he gives me free reign to, to run whatever I want, which, which I love, um, you know, some coaches would be, you know, maybe egotistical or, you know, kind of against that because they want it done their way where he's been very open. Um, you know, I feel like he was the same way. I mean, you know, coach Schaefer, he, he's handed the entire offense 
over to coach Schaefer and, you know, you've seen what it's done. He's, he's had some pretty good hitters come out of, come out of there. And, you know, that just goes to, to being open as a coach and allowing things to happen and not, not being so caught up in yourself that you can't let other people have a role and, and make decisions along with yourself as a head coach. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, he, 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 I'm sure he's learned it over time. You know, he's, he's been doing it for a long time. He's coached under some pretty great coaches, um, you know, and now, now he's one of them and, and I'm lucky enough to, to be under him. So it's been, it's been good, and you know, getting to play for him and now getting to coach for him is, is even better experience. Sure. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, you, you took, you you were able to take kind of that same model. You said not being egotistical. And like you just said about having other guys, like just being open and receptive to like, Hey, we think we can do this in this little space here. Okay. Let's just run with that. And let's go with that. You know, like where you're, able to kind of take everybody's not just oh I'm going to do it my way I'm the guy yeah yeah absolutely and, and you know from my playing days you know it was a way different atmosphere you know as a player you're you're kind of I don't want to say scared but there's a um a little bit of a difference between being a coach under coach Lou and being a player. And mm-hmm. I like to have both sides. I think that honestly, that helps our players with me being around because I've gone through what they're going through and I've dealt with, you know, maybe him getting upset or, you know, some, some bad times where things maybe aren't going as well. And, you know, kids nowadays maybe kind of get down on themselves a little bit more and aren't as, aren't as strong minded, but um, it's been, I, I enjoy my time and I feel like I'm able to help our players more because I played there than if I was just the guy who never played there uh, under coach little. Sure. So being able to have that relationship, you know, uh, w- with kids and kind of like bridge it f- between you and the kids and coach little kind of being yeah. that bridge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our guys, you think about a kid coming out of high school, He probably wasn't coached real hard, probably wasn't coached real smart or disciplined, you know, not that high school coaches aren't any good, but, you know, most of the time, you know, they're going to get coached a little bit better once they get to college. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of something we tell our players from day one is, you know, you you probably didn't learn very much in high school and and now's the time where you're going to learn way more about baseball than you have in the last 10 or 15 years of your life. Um, So it's, it's, it's a, it's a good transition. Um, The kids that can make it through normally have success, not just in baseball, but later on in life. Um, You know, it's not just about, can you successfully cover a bunt or know where to throw the ball? Or can you, can you hit a guy that's throwing 92 miles an hour it's it's lessons you learn that that help you on later in life outside of the game Mm, there you go there you go i mean definitely so like i'm thinking about um along along those lines is that something you know will you even take the reins of so because it sounds like you're just working you're the defensive guy like you're that you're a defensive coach uh, will you bring in part of the mentality, those kind of things? Like, is that something you maybe just do on the side? Somebody maybe text you, you have a more kind of informal, or do you guys have any classroom sessions Yeah. to do, to talk about that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of different stuff. It's, it's on field stuff. It's off the, off to the side. Maybe when there's a break in practice or pre-practice, just a one-on-one conversation, there's group classroom meetings. Um, that we have um, not just with our hitters, our pitchers do pitchers and catchers do the same. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've done, and honestly, I've taken a step back now that I've taken this job with PBR, and I do hate that I haven't been able to be around as much as I had been because I did love being there day in and day out and being at practice. But you know, before when when all I was doing was coaching, I I would try and do infield or outfield work every single day if possible. Um, that's one thing that I learned once I transferred from Potomac State to Liberty was the value of 
the defensive side of baseball. Um, the guy that I played for at Liberty my senior year, Scott Jackson, was super adamant about being a great defensive team. Um, his biggest thing that I remember him saying about defense was the teams that make it to Omaha pretty much all field 975 as a team or higher. Um, and that's, that's something that I was a defensive guy, you know, personally played shortstop and the left side of the infield, loved, loved defense, loved ground balls. Um, you know, and that's, that's kind of something that I'm going to stick with. I hope for the rest of my coaching career, because I see a value in it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sometimes, especially nowadays with how big hitting has become and pitching and velocity has become, I feel like defense is kind of taking a backseat to all of that, where I think it's just as important as pitching and, and being able to score runs. So, um, you know, I tried to incorporate that into our Potomac state teams with, you know, we've had some pretty good, pretty good defensive players that have moved on and are now playing at four year schools. And, you know, I hope that along the lines, maybe I taught them something just like I was taught from, from guys that I learned from in my playing career. That's just pretty much what it was. Stuff that I did as a player is what, you know, I've tried to incorporate into to coaching and mm -hmm. as far as fundamentals and defensive stuff. And, um, you know, it's, that's kind of the way it works. It's, it's hard to come up with your own ideas. A lot of, a lot of the game is learning from other people and using ideas and drills and tricks that you learn from, from outside sources to incorporate into your game or you as a coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I mean, I guess you're still, I don't know if you're still in that mode of like, has there been something, I mean, I guess the track man has, I guess has probably been that been something that's kind of said, wow, you know, this is, this is a lot different than what I did as a player. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to learn this so then I could teach it a little bit better um, where you're trying to say like, Hey, just because it didn't, that's not how I did it. Like, this is still like a good thing. Yeah, there there's, I, I come across that. Um, you know, I, I was a good player. I wasn't a great player. Um, I realized that I'm, humble enough to say that I understand that. And, you know, some, some people aren't able to, to get over that, um, to where, you know, moving on in life and finding an outside purpose other than just being a baseball player. Um, you know, I love the game enough to where I don't see myself ever not coaching somewhere. Um, you know, I could have easily given up this coaching job at Potomac state because I'm, you know, super busy with PBR. Um, but I just have such a tie with Potomac that I, I couldn't do that. Um, it's, it's outside the game. You know, I've put a lot of time in and there's, uh, there's two kids that are in their third year now at Potomac state. And they were in my first year when I came in as a coach and they're probably, they're going to move on after this year. Um, hopefully both of them get to move on to big time schools, but you know, it's cool getting to watch. This is my first time getting to watch kids move on to a, a four-year program and, and see what they do with maybe some of the little bit of knowledge you pass along to them early in their career to see how it, how it works for them, you know, when they get to a higher level. Um, for me, you know, playing wise, I remember the stuff I learned from Coach Schaefer at Potomac State as an infielder, um, little things I would, I would see a picture of myself and it would be something that he taught me and mm -hmm. I would take a screenshot of it and send it to him and be like, do you remember this? Like when you taught me, this is, I was this 18 year old freshman who thought he knew everything, but didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, now I'm doing it and it's, it just, it just happens because I've taught myself to do it and you taught me how to do it. And it's part of my game now. And, and I, I enjoy that. I enjoyed it as a player and hopefully now I get to, see that happen as a coach yeah for sure it's definitely awesome to see that transfer um but uh i i, I guess just yeah looking at you kind of touch touch base about this about um just not able just doing your responsibilities of juggling both like so what is um you know because I, I think this is going to impact a lot of people as, as pbr grows i'm sure this is going to people are going to have this decision. How are you able to juggle those things between what you're doing with PBR and coaching? Yeah. So a lot of things had to change. Um, 
prior to December, I had been living in Kaiser, uh, right out, you know, right in the town of Potomac State. And yeah. when I took this job, I probably could have stayed living there, um, but I, I chose to move to Morgantown, West Virginia. So I live in Morgantown now. It's a little bit easier to, to travel to get to di- the different locations that we hold events for Potomac State. Um, at the same time, that means I'm not on campus every day, seeing the guys, going to practice. Um, and I do feel bad about that. I, I, this is honestly, this is the second time I've done this where halfway through the year, I've taken a different position. Um, I did it back in 2018, transitioning into 19. I left and was an assistant coach at BMI um, and left the team in the middle of the year to try and pursue something else. Um, and, and here I go again. It started to become a little bit of a joke every December. They'd say, oh, where, where are you going to get a job this year? You know, where are you moving on to this year? Um, but, it, you know, this this is a, a fun role with PBR. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's something I was a little unsure about at first because growing up, PBR really hadn't made it big yet. Um, when I was coming out of high school, I never went to a PBR event where if P- if I was coming out of high school nowadays, I would probably go to PBR events just mm-hmm. because of how big they are and how beneficial they are to to student athletes that maybe are in an area that, you know, isn't the biggest recruited area like where I grew up. But um, yeah, for me, a lot of things have changed. I've moved. Uh, I've been missing practices. I've been missing games, which, you know, is tough. I do my best to make it to as many as I can around my schedule of going to different events around Pennsylvania and New York and trying to go out and scout high school games and, and different stuff. Um, I feel like I don't have a lot of free time. But that's okay. I, I, I love baseball and that's, that's my job right now is, is being involved in different aspects of the game. So um, it's, it's enjoyable. And even though I am, you know, thin on time, I don't, I don't mind it a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely tough. I think I said, I think more and more as, as PBR grows, I think people are going to have to make a, make those kind of decisions. Um, but I think like, you know, and the reason why, you know, I wanted to connect with you about here is just, um, you know, I, I don't think you get the role that you got without having a good n- knowledge of the game you know, having your reputation with coach little, um, you, you know, and just being, and being a good coach. So, um, <clears throat> man, I'm just thinking like the skills now and like what, like a, a, an organization like PBR and the things that you can do. So like, um, how, so in, cause you kind of touched about this, you, you touched base about on this, about if you were in high school, these are the things that you would do. Like you would go to a PBR event, um, yeah. you know, and that's really how, cause like, can, can you really then explain then how recruiting has changed and how, what guys should probably be doing? Absolutely. And what yeah. you kind of notice college is doing. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of similarities to, I mean, I didn't, I didn't graduate high school that long ago right. um, there's still a lot of similarities. Um, you know, like I got recognized that going to a uh, West Virginia camp, a WVU camp in Morgantown, you know, went down on a Friday night and stayed Friday and played Saturday. And, you know, that's, that's how I got my into college baseball um, because I got seen at a camp. Um, you know, those are still very popular. But at the time, like I said, PBR hadn't grown into to what it is today. Um, nowadays, especially in the two states that, that I'm with, Pennsylvania and New York, it is very, very well known. No matter whether you're in Philadelphia or Pitts- Pittsburgh or Buffalo or Syracuse, we're going to come to your area and we're going to run an event. Um, and we're going to promote it to where we hope that we reach out to everybody that could possibly be interested. Um, you know, the amount of different cities that I've been to in the last eight weeks, honestly, that I had never been to in my life before, just because of the events and the, the, the area that we try and cover. Cause there's pockets around those States that, that we understand that are super populated that have a ton of talent and that's that's kind of our game is getting into those areas, 
um, that have a lot of talent and having the surrounding areas with also kids that are within a couple hours that they can travel into to attend these events and, you know, help promote themselves that otherwise, you know, a high school coach's word only goes so far to mm-hmm. go to college where, you know, a PBR guy is a little bit more respected, um, you know, part of like what you said, because of our backgrounds, um, like Dan Savica, 11 or 12 or 13 year professional pitcher um, has coached it. It's the division one level, the junior college level. He's, he's, he's done a lot in the game. Um, you know, and, and he's hired different people who have similar, similar reputations as he does to where when a college coach calls, they can trust that what he's saying is the truth is an honest opinion and is up to par with what that coach is actually looking for. Um, where, you know, a high school coach maybe played high school or college baseball and doesn't have a huge reputation to stand on. And the coach is maybe a little bit skeptical of what he's saying about that player. And not that there's anything wrong with that, um, but PBR does pride itself, especially Pennsylvania and New York on being reputable and, and putting out quality information on quality players. And PBR for me, like it, it's also unbiased. You know what I mean? I think that's one valuable thing is yeah. because none of you have a horse in the race here. You know what I mean? Now I know that, yeah, because you still have your responsibilities at pot state and don't get me wrong, but when you're just, you're just going into an event, you're just saying an apple's an apple and orange and orange, like here's the numbers, here's where we're at. Like, you know, and so like, that's, I think what's really valuable is like, you can honestly just get an honest, unbiased opinion. Can this dude play? Yeah. What level can we, what level do we think he's going to be at? Yeah. And, and the next step that the game has taken now is, is with the technology piece and the, the numbers being incorporated that, you know, where before the naked eye can only see so much, the, the most talented baseball scout of all time that, you know, says that he has signed X amount of players and this many big leaguers, you know, can be backed up with technology and information that, colleges are now buying into professional baseball is now buying into and it's not just somebody's word it's it's proven facts that are on paper in front of you to see exact velocity exact spin rate um, different angles different um, you know things that the the technology reads that are you know constantly developing um, like this is something that I use. It's, it's an old equation, but I, I value it um, is the runs created uh, equation. I don't know if you ever looked into that. Um, it takes into account hits, walks, um, total bases and at bats basically. And it's an equation among those things. And, and it was honestly created, I believe by a, a guy who wasn't even a baseball guy. Um, like he wasn't a baseball coach, hmm. but he had an interest in baseball and he it's, it's kind of along the lines of the um, what's the uh, the rating that they give big leaguers nowadays, and it's like um, in war. I, yeah, it's along those lines, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but it just kind of shows, and it's an offensive equation that kind of shows a, a offensive player's output. Where you know, batting average has been the the biggest benchmark for the longest time, where you know, runs created might show a little bit more information about a player who his batting average may not be up to the 275 or 300 range, but he, he gets on base a lot. He walks a lot. Maybe he steals bases. Maybe he, he runs the base as well. And he finds a way to score, score runs where like, that's what it takes to win games. That's super valuable sure. versus a guy who just has a really high average, but maybe that average is based on, single 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 um so it's something that i take into take into account and try and try and use with with our team at potomac state to honestly it goes into partially making the lineup to see you know who's going to create the most runs as as an offensive production as an offensive player um and i learned it from a, a guy that i coached with at bmi and um you know, he used it and I liked it and have gone with it just because it's a different look. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of what all this new stuff is. It's just a different look that 
maybe it's a little bit different than your traditional average and, and doubles and, you know, slugging percentage or OPS or different stuff like that. It's just, it's just new stuff that, that maybe I specifically value that who knows, maybe somebody say, eh, you don't know what you're talking about. That's, that's worthless. Um, but for me, it's valuable and it's, it's backed up. It's a, it's a value. It's a number that comes out of an equation based on how well you do. Um, now, is this something that you, will you guys, do you, do you have to, I can run hand write that. Like, is that something yeah. you just do yourself? So yeah, it's not it's, like it, it's, you don't get it through like your game changer or like anything. No, it, it's a simple equation. I can look okay. at our stat sheet and, and do some, it's, I have to use a calculator. Um, yeah. It's a little bit bigger numbers than I can do in my head, but um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 the number's constantly growing. The more at bats you get, the more hits you get, the number grows up, but throughout a team, throughout an entire lineup of say 15 hitters, you know, it'll, it'll only work its way down. Um, and it, it maybe takes out a little bit of that bias. Maybe that you were talking about where you, you think this kid is, is a better hitter than, than maybe he is that the mm-hmm. numbers might say, um, or why the kid shouldn't hit top five, why the kid might need to hit seven, eight, nine. It, exactly. It, it's, it's kind of along those lines. Um, you know, one thing that I, Coach Schaefer and I do, and this is hopefully it's not a hidden secret. It, it's not that big of a deal, but nearly after every single day, we rank the hitters one to 20 or one to 15 because it's a revolving door. You know, for the most part, the guy that you think is the best hitter the first day in the fall is normally not the best hitter the last day of the spring. Mm-hmm. Um, it's constantly changing, but it's, it's valuable information because of the way baseball works with yeah. ups and downs and streaks and guys that get hot and guys that get cold, um, you know, and hitting's tough. Um, really good hitters tend to stay at the top of the list and um, occasionally they'll drop down. But over the course of, of my three years, if you were to look at the, the top five or the top six, those guys are normally pretty much the same. Um, they may bounce around and swap places, but they're, uh, then we in that top part of the list and making a lineup is, is not easy. There's different ways to do it. Um, but it's one thing that I've used and I know we use to, to kind of help make that a little bit easier. So ranking hitters every day based off of where they're at that day. Yeah. And, and it, it comes down to, to what you see. You may only see five swings, which is not fair to that hitter. Um, you know, but it, it, it doesn't change much at the end of the day. Um, it just kind of the, kind of goes to show who are your guys that can be consistent. And in baseball, if, if you're a consistent guy, you deserve to be in the lineup because you know what you're going to get out of them. Right. Um, and that's that's basically what it comes down to. It it doesn't matter who's the best hitter um, on paper or in somebody's opinion. It comes down to who are your nine most consistent guys, and that's kind of over the course of a year what you what you learn. So that when it comes down to to playoff time or postseason time, you know who who to rely on and put in that lineup. Mm-hmm. Not for sure. Now, let me ask you something. Is that something that you share with the kids? Like, is that something you just like they walk into the, the locker room, they see one through 15 on the board? <sighs> Occasionally, but maybe a few times of the year. Um, maybe when things haven't been going so well or, or yet maybe have a, a little issue with somebody. It, it happens where – it's honestly, it's, it's good to be honest with the guys because you, you never know who you're dealing with, with kids, you know, kids have sometimes a higher opinion of themselves than what they are in your head. Or maybe sometimes they have a lower opinion of themselves and they need to be a little bit more confident. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a, a come to Jesus moment almost with, with our guys we will post it. We do the same thing with our pitchers, you know, mm-hmm. here's in our opinion as okay. coaches who, are in charge of making the lineup and decides who, who plays, you know, the, the, the lineup gets posted, but the list will post, you know, sometimes in the fall, um, maybe halfway through the fall, just to kind of show where you are in our eyes and maybe to, to, to get guys a little bit more motivated. Maybe a guy who's struggling a little bit, that's trying to figure it out. He, he can, uh, he can get, get it rolling and move up the list and, and keep, keep, uh, keep everybody, you know. Yeah. I like, I, I like that. What you said about like, you know, I think 
Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's a depth chart, like football. Like, so it's it's funny, like people have fo- their depth charts in football. It's like there's no big deal. Like you know your twos, you know your threes. You know, like it's just like, I guess yeah. because they just scrimmage so much, you know, and they have to play, and they go ones versus twos. Like you all <laughs> automatically, it's just natural. But like for you, say, oh, well, we rank our and, and like we're gonna post it. Like, holy, holy crap! But yeah. I'm like, you know, like it's what's the difference? Like why can't fo- why can football have a depth chart and baseball can't? Yeah, and I think I think part of baseball is you know who's hot and who's cold. Um, there's there's constant changes in lineups. Um, you know the one thing that I've always said and always kind of relied on and never really seen it be any different is the lineup you have opening day is never going to be the lineup you have when it comes down to to the final game in the postseason when you're in the championship. Um, maybe sometimes it is, but, but for the most part, you know, you, you're going to have, I'll tell you a good story. One of my favorite kids ever that I've ever played with at Liberty university came in as a freshman. His name was Trey McDyer. He was, uh, uh, an infielder, probably played shortstop in high school, right out of Northern Virginia, came to Liberty, um, had a couple other kids from his high school, um, knew he was a good athlete. I'm pretty sure he was like three sport all state in Virginia as a senior, which is really impressive. Um, but like the first two weekends of the season, he didn't travel. He wasn't even on the traveling squad mm. by game 15. He's the starting third baseman. And part of that was injuries. Part of that was kids not playing to the expectations that, the coaches had and maybe they weren't playing as well as maybe they did in the fall and as they showed and it gave him an opportunity to you know come out every day he he never got up he never got down he he was just kind of a level-headed kid and he's actually still playing there he's the third baseman today Mm. um and you know he comes in as a freshman 18 years old hitting in a a tough conference and playing on a, a competitive team hits like 320 or 330 as a freshman and plays every day after, after halfway through the season. And, you know, he could have gotten super down about not being on the traveling squad at week one and week two, when we were on the road, um, you know, but he found his way into the lineup. And once he did, he never came out. And, you know, I, I think maybe that's part of the reason he's, he's still playing today is, you know, he showed them, he showed the coaching staff something as a, a freshman early on that he's a guy you can rely on. And, mm-hmm. I think he's in his fifth year um, at Liberty, and um, it's fun. I, I still keep track of him just because he was a he was a freshman when I was a senior, so we had a good relationship, and we were both infielders. And you know, he uh, he's an interesting story that you don't always hear. Most kids that don't travel week one and week two don't get a crack at the lineup, but he found his way in, um, which was awesome. Yeah, stayed hungry and stayed after it. Well, it's great. Yeah, you know, like you said, <clears throat> it's the season's long and it's it's people get injured, people balls take a bad hop, and here you are. You know, it's just now you got opportunities. So it's great, great lessons learned for sure, man. No doubt. For sure. No doubt. Awesome, awesome stuff, man. So um dude, uh looking at that. Uh just thinking about even anything more. Like, I guess I had a I, I had a question, especially because I'm in, I was talking I'm kind of hint around because I worked an event for Kyle uh, in February uh, for okay. and it was more of a region one, but I just think about this and wanted to get your take on it because um, especially people uh, I think they can um when they're running events like running workouts. You know, like the typical pro style workout, you run the 60, you get your throwing across the diamond, you know, like these kind of things. Do you see any of the, cause all those, those are still besides you. Now you have track man that just tracks everything, all the, all this data, the essential foundational workout is still essentially the same. Yes. Do you ever see anything, how that could be better? Like, where is your mind kind of like that? Like, do you feel like that structure will always be there? like, Hey man, I, 
wonder if, wonder if we could tweak this and make this to show maybe like that this kid that maybe he can't throw 90 across the diamond. Like we know that this kid can play though. Yeah, that's honestly in my short time with Pennsylvania and New York, that's constantly a topic of how can we make it better and what can we do? It's, it's a competition, honestly, between all the States is, who can do the best, who can provide the best workout, who can, you know, attract the most kids and promote the most kids and help the most kids. And, you know, I think the one thing we've done is we've tried to add more game like reps into a workout where your traditional workout for an infielder is a, but one ball at him, one ball to his left, one ball to his right and a slow roller, which honestly this is my opinion. I say it all the time. You can take the ground ball at him, take the ground ball to his left, take the ground ball to his round right and throw it out. I want to see him come get the slow roller and can he throw it on the run? As an infield coach, as a defensive guy, if you can't play a ball in the run, we're going to probably move you to first or to the outfield or maybe try and try you out as a catcher. That's my opinion. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but the one thing we have done, we've added in double plays. We've added in a feed to second. And, and a feed from the second baseman. So we'll actually have a guy at second base. We'll hit him a ground ball. He'll give him a nice flip just to kind of see the shortstop come across the bag, um, which is more game-like, as game-like as you can possibly get in the showcase setting. And then obviously finish up with a slow roller. Um, all the stuff we do is on turf. So you're going to get that perfect hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't really get to see how does a kid, you know, maybe position himself based on what pitch is coming or who's right. the hitter or what the pitcher, how hard is the pitcher throwing? Um, you know, in my head's rolling right now that I said that because I was a middle infielder growing up and honestly, I wasn't very fast. So I had to position myself correctly based yep. on the pitch and the pitcher and the hitter and all this stuff, um, you know, to try and give myself the biggest advantage as possible. And, you know, honestly, that's something that you miss. Um, in a, in a showcase setting, you get to see the skill, you get to see the, the controlled environment. Um, you know, it'd be great if we could go live at bats at showcases, but there's just too many kids to do a lot of time, uh, right? That stuff takes so much time. And, and it's tough. Um, we've done the same thing with first baseman and catchers. So with catchers, you, you get your traditional pop time. We've started to give them, um, throws to third and also block and recover to uh you know the first base like a like a strike three in the dirt where the kids got to block bounce and you know choose inside or outside and make that throw to first and it's all video to for you know like you can go on and, and watch those videos of the kids moving around a little bit um you know like i said just just adding things in to try and make it more game like for the pitchers it's tough you know you can't put a batter in there um I've, I've been to some showcases where they give the pitcher a time limit on how many, how many minutes he has to throw as many pitches as he can. Um, so everybody's going to get a different amount. I don't necessarily like that. Um, with track man nowadays, you have to get a substantial amount of pitches to have the data, you know, to see what's his ranges, what's, what's his fastball range from. Um, and it's funny, the one thing that we see constantly, um, you know, we'll, we'll be running the track man unit on the iPad and tagging pitches and we'll say, okay, Hey, give us your best fastball on your last pitch. And the kid's like, Oh, okay. And he gets up on the mound and he throws a pitch two or three miles an hour harder than what he had been sitting early on in his fastballs. And um, a couple of our guys that are pretty well versed in track man, will be like calling them over saying, Hey, like the point of track man is to show how hard you can throw. What are honestly, what are your, your maximum numbers that you can produce, you know, why would you not do that from pitch number one? Mm-hmm. You know, it's there, there is a little bit of a difference between, and you know, I know you know this and everybody knows this, there's a difference between the showcase setting and the game set. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why it's, it's valuable to see both. Yeah. Um, coaches want to see both. They don't want to just see how do you do when you know a ground ball is being hit to you or how do you know, you know, how do you do when you know you have to throw a, a curveball here where there's no count, no batter, no situation, no base runner. Um, you know, so there's, there's good in both. There's good to, to showcase. There's good to, 
to game game situations and like I said that's one thing we're trying to incorporate as much as possible to make it more realistic and and have the footage show how they'll react in those situations yeah and I, th- I think it's just valuable um to just even know that point that look PBR like that's there, there isn't a perfect scenario here that you guys could honestly realistically even do, you know, cause then the events wouldn't be any good, you know, you wouldn't be able to get through it. Uh, it's just good to fit people to understand like part of you, you need to have somebody take live at bats when you're having a live at bat or in the game to just know like, yes, PBR, you should be doing it. Like just even for the networking itself, do it. Um, and then on top of it, like you still have to do some work here. Like you have to have someone, videotape mm-hmm. you during a game and have you take those things during a game as well to you know so then you can have your own recruiting video on top of that where you can say here's some in-game footage so i think that's right. still very valuable i think that's very smart you know like we have like those things should be out there now like yep do a pbr event but you still need to do your own work like you still need to get that in-game footage yeah and and the one way we we've tried to com- combine all that and this is way before my time, but you know, the Pennsylvania and the New York state games is a combination of both, you know, um, my first experience with those two States was this past summer. And, um, the way it went, you you did your workout, you did your, your 60, you did your offensive showing, you did your batting practice and you did your, uh, defensive workout. And then you went straight into 14 innings of a game. So you got both of those in the same day, back to back. Unfortunately, COVID didn't allow coaches to be there, but we live streamed. And we had, you know, 200 to 300 coaches sitting in their office watching these games as live as we could possibly get them. Um, You know, hopefully this year coaches are allowed to be in the stands, all levels of coaches, D1, 2, 3, NAIA, JUCO, all of them can be there um, to see it because it's as good of an event as as you can possibly get because you get both sides of it like we were talking about. You get the showcase Mm -hmm. to see what – almost what are those maximum outputs that a kid can produce? And then you get right. to see how does it translate to a game? Right. Um, and some kids are, some kids are good at one end and not good at the other. Some are vice versa. Some are good at both. Um, it's just depends on what that school is looking for specifically. Mm-hmm. All right, so I think that's very valuable information. Everybody's trying to find a way to get themselves promoted and find ways to promote our kids, promote our own kids. Uh, get those kids seen and I think there's just a very valuable information there for sure yeah I mean the one thing I, I it takes a little bit it takes a lot of hard work it takes you know somebody helping you out it takes a little bit of luck along the way and it takes the right person at the right time and you know a little bit of combination of each of those you know gives kids opportunities um Obviously, everybody wants to play at the Division One level. Um, there's only so many roster spots that are available to be filled. Um, you know, people people look down at junior college. People look down at Division Two and Division Three and NAIA because everybody thinks they should be playing at the, the Division One level. And for for some people, that is the route. Um, you know, but for some people, you get the opportunity to go to a junior college and potentially compete for a national championship and be one of the eight or 10 teams that makes it out to grand junction, Colorado, like from the people that I know that have made it out, that's the, one of the best experiences of their life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately people look down at that for whatever reason. Um, You know, one of our guys that works with, with PBR Pennsylvania is Ted Williams. And he was a player at Millersville pretty much started for four years from what I understand. And he played in the national championship game at the division two world series. Like I wouldn't do anything to play in the national championship game. It doesn't matter what level it's at. Like yeah. it's, 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 it's exciting to play in those big games. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the biggest game I've ever played in, but I pretty sure the two or three biggest games I've ever played in were a lot of fun. And, and that's what it comes down to is, is it's, it's fun while you're doing it and you, you learn a lot from it so that when it's over, you, you know how to go about life and then do things the right way. No, for sure. For sure. It definitely finding the right fit, you know, is important, you know, like for me, like I went to Salisbury and mm-hmm. um, got to play in the D3 world series there. We played in Fox cities, went to Oregon, not um, Wisconsin. 
uh, Appleton, Wisconsin. And, um, you know, playing in front of 10,000 people and, you know, it's pretty yeah. incredible playing a triple A stadium and, um, facing you probably remember every minute of it. And, some of it. Know, yep. Should, definitely. Some, I don't want to remember. That's for sure. You know, <laughs> it didn't show very well. I, uh, me personally, I did not show very well in that, in that first, in that world series game. Um, you know, and so we had a tough draw, but, uh, just an incredible experience nonetheless, you know, and then when we, we took a team in 08, uh, at Hagerstown, um, was, a yeah. part of, we, we rode the lightning man in 08, we rode the lightning and, uh, took a team with only will only one division, one player that was going to be on there. And, um, you know, had a bunch of division two at Strasburg at the time was division three, um, had a Frostburg guy. Um, mm-hmm. It was an All-American there. He ended up being an All-American in Frostburg, but um, he was very good. But yeah, man, that uh, that Grand Junction place was it was unbelievable. That, that place so you, shut down. Oh, I, I've I've never been lucky enough to make it. We were we were a game away my sophomore year. We lost in the Super Regional Final, three to two. Like it, an absolute heartbreaker. Um, you know, bawled like a baby when it was over. Mm-hmm. Loved every minute of it. Um, but it was, uh, you know, that's probably as big of a game as I've played in, um, you know, that I can think of in my life. And, you know, I'd love the opportunity to get to Grand Junction. That's what was talked about from the day that I got on campus um, at Potomac State was, you know, we're going to get to Grand Junction. We thought we could have possibly done it as uh, my freshman year in 2014. And next thing you know, you get eliminated in the regional final like in your season's over when, you know, the whole year you talked about getting to the, the, the college world series for, for NJCAA, you know, and didn't make it. You, you got the, you, you actually have been out there. You've gone to grand junction. I'm, I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> that's uh, I would go, I would, I would be excited to go as a, as a coach. Yep. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd feel yep. like a little kid. It was I mean, even taking in and out, man, or to because I was the defensive coach at the time, and you know, like remember Jennings just being like, you "Can't they'll be messing this up and embarrassing us," <laughs> like taking in and out in front of like fifth, like the stadium was like it was, it was amazing, like the biggest. That was the best experience, like game wise. It was better than the D three World Series easily, um, you know, yeah. just from a standpoint of because it was, it's more intimate, like that we played in a triple a stadium for D, the D three world series. And it was just huge. Like it was massive. And, right. but the Juco, the grand junction is like the town shuts down. Like it is very, very intimate. You're on top of one another. Um, you know, our host family is like in the dugout too. Like you have a sponsor and they're like kind of in the, like, it's just, it's so much more intimate. Um, and it's, it was incredible, you know, very, um, just a just a great just a great experience for sure and uh you know i'm glad yeah but here i was it was a five you know reason i juco was for me i'm a five five graduate five five maybe 130 pounds i'm not gonna get recruited you know like you're not gonna get you know i mean i was decently fast i mean but like i wasn't six five runner i I wasn't you know left-handed and could slap it or do some things like that i mean i could glove it a little bit but I, i mean just not that guy. So Juco allowed me to grow up and let me see, Hey, I can hit college pitching or I can feel it at a high level. I can, you know, I can. So then that allowed me to get an opportunity at Salisbury because, you know, Salisbury is a good fit I, for me. I wanted to go to a place where like I was going to win, had an opportunity yep. to play right away. Cause like, I wasn't going to go to division one program and just get my brains beat in, <laughs> you know, 40 times a year. Like I wasn't going to do that. Like, yeah. um, you know, and so, uh, yeah, those are just, I think it's all things that go into it, you know? Um, there's a, there's a lot of people that don't think that way. They hear D one and they just want to jump on it immediately. Um, yeah. you know, and, and there's a lot of other good programs out there. Um, you know, like my, my dream job, I, I other than being a, a junior college head coach, um, would honestly to be a division two head coach. I would love to be a division two head coach at a, at a good program. Um, you know, and honestly, I would take over a program that maybe hasn't had a lot of success. Um, just cause I'd, I'd like to see, you know, the, the building process of a program from 
almost the ground up just to see, you know, what could happen. And, you know, I constantly think what would, what would I, you know, try and preach to our kids? What would I try and, you know, make a staple of the program? And, you know, I definitely don't have it all figured out and I'm trying to, to build that along the way, but it just seems like a, a, a route that I'd like to take. Um, I never played at the division two level. I almost did. Um, I was probably a couple of days away from, from signing to go play at a division two school. And it's kind of the, the level that I feel is, you know, very, very good. Um, very much can compete at a high level, you know, could compete with a lot of division ones. I know I hear and see all the time about the, the PSAC conference could, could compete in, you know, any mid-major conference in the country. Um, Hard to argue with that. For the most part, um, you know, especially the the, the top tier teams there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like everywhere I go, I see a PSAC school out recruiting. So they obviously are doing something right. They're getting out and they're seeing, they're seeing the the good players around, around the area. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe down the road, we'll see, Um, you know, but that's, like I said earlier, baseball's the the route that I'll stay with, and I can't see myself not coaching somewhere at any point in my life. So, sure, I don't understand. I wouldn't know what to do with myself without it. <laughs> no, that's great, man. I, uh, you know, just like just wrapping things up here, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you're doing. I think, like I said, PBR is just doing a great service for our kids. Greatest for people. I love how they're just getting into JUCO. I um, think that's smart for one. Uh, Juco needs those people um, just as much as the high school kids. Um, you know, and your time stick with it, being an assistant coach. You know, I think there's stuff is so there's so much value in being having a good assistant coach. You know, the past three episodes, like right like now, I'm just kind of really just kind of honing in on like some really you know some good assistant coaches. You, I, I'm fully convinced you cannot have good programs without good assistant coaches. Um, you know, and uh, I'm sure you're even seeing that with like your staff at PBR, like you've got to have good people there that are going to help these events run smoothly, you know, and uh, because there's so many fires, I'm sure you're trying to put out too nowadays, you got to watch. But uh, man, it's just been, it's been great. You know, I really love your perspective. I thought it'd be awesome to have you on. Um, Yeah. I'd love to have some more PBR guys on here as well. Uh, Just because I think, you know, that's where we're We're unbiased kids. Like we're just trying to, get these kids seen. We're trying to get these kids out there. Like I'd like that's pure servant, the servant leadership. That's just all what we're trying to do. They're just trying to serve. Uh, it's not about themselves. You don't see like, Oh, well, I'm putting this kid here. I'm putting this kid like, no, like we're offering an opportunity for these kids to go reach their dreams. If they can see if they can play at a, at a level or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's become, a, I feel like it's become a little bit easier um, as far as promoting, promoting yourself as, as an individual, but, you can only do so much. It, it takes somebody else. It takes, takes other people to, to make it work. Um, nobody's ever done it on their own. Um, the one thing that I say is there's no one, there's no cookie cutter way to do it. Everybody's got a different path. Everybody's got a different journey. Um, no two, no two kids recruiting stories are, are identical. Everybody goes through different things um, as far as their time prior to getting to to school and once they're there um there's 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 many ways to do it um you know definitely learn from from other people who have done it before you to to learn if you're ever in that situation how to handle it but just be uh you know like you said earlier we're we're just trying to help as as many kids as possible it's not about us it's about them you know that's that's our job and that's what we enjoy doing um and that's, that's, that's why we we're all part of it. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. So if people want to, like you said, uh, what's the way, what you said, people are DMing you and things like that on Twitter. Um, how can they reach out to you on Twitter? Yeah. Um, my Twitter handle is my last name, which is pronounced Koala, uh, kind of like a koala bear. Um, <laughs> so that's actually my Twitter handle is koala bear one, two, six. I made it back a while ago, but, um, yeah, I mean, people do DM me. Um, I get a lot of emails, our emails, all of our contact information is on our PBR website for Pennsylvania and New York. Um, 
you know, we have, we have a pretty big staff. I mean, it's not just myself and a couple other guys. We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys, you know, that are, are daily guys constantly contributing to, you know, making it better and, and advancing it to, to new heights where we definitely don't want to stay where we're at. I mean, we're growing year after year and that's just kind of the, the route we're on and seems to be the trend. Um, part of it is keeping up with some of the other states. Um, there's definitely competition between state to state and, and we enjoy that because we're former athletes who enjoy competition and, you know, who, who can, who can be the best. And, and that's what it's all about. So who, uh, who can we see, who can we promote, who can we help get to the next level? It's awesome, man. It's awesome. It's valuable. Um, I know more coaches and more coaches are you know, appreciative and I'm appreciative of it. Uh, very valuable service. Uh, and it's great. Just have great guys like yourself in those positions, man, that are just high quality baseball guys been around. They just kind of get it. And then at the forefront of it, just, it's about the kids. It's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, that's why we do it. Um, it's our, it's our target, you know, that's, that's the point of, that's how PBR all got started back in, uh, 2008, 2009, I believe, um, you know, and it's grown to, to much larger than it was back in day one and to, to levels and heights that it never would have even been dreamed of back, back then and continuing to grow with the, the uses of technology and just, you know, all the different great people that are involved. Mm -hmm. And now even with the, with the draft league stuff that they started, they're partnering up with the memo age league, like just making huge games. Yeah, that's man. a whole, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. It's a whole nother layer of it. The whole nother layer of it. Like, Oh, they're just now involved with that. I'm like this, these guys, man. I've been in, I've been on a couple of different calls about the draft league and, you know, I'm not, it's going to be, it's going to be something when it, when it finally gets rolling, not that it's not going to get rolling this year. Obviously this is the inaugural year. It's going to start off this year, but wait to see what it does here, here soon. I mean, it's going to be doing things that have never been done before. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's going to be big and, and I hope to be a part of it. You know, I live here in Morgantown where one of the teams is right 10 minutes up the road with the black bears. It used to be affiliated yeah. with the pirates and, you know, not that I'm going to be a coach or, or anything, but just eventually it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a big time thing. And, and I just hope to be a part of it. It's, it's going to be fun to watch you know, nonetheless. I mean, if I could just go to a game and watch some of the best players from, from all over the place. And, you know, one of the things they're trying to do is have all the managers and coaches be former, you know, professional players and former big league guys who can, you know, educate these players that are playing for them what it's going to be like when they get the pro ball mm. uh, that's one thing i never had was a lot of influence on or education on what college baseball was like you know growing up not very many people from from my area went on to play college baseball and the ones that did i didn't have a, a relationship with so when i went to college baseball you know i was shocked fresh i didn't know anything and, you know, I enjoyed that I didn't. I, I learned a lot that way. I didn't have any, um, you know, knowledge of, you know, what was it going to be like or anything like that. And and it was enjoyable. You know, I definitely made mistakes, but um, it was fun. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, the having somebody to kind of explain to me what it would have been like and just to have a little bit of a, a heads up on certain things definitely would have been been valuable. But. Um, yeah, it just kind of the, seems to be one of the things that the draft league is trying to do is really prepare kids for the draft and professional baseball because oh. it's, it's, a uh, it's an experience that I never got to experience, but from what I understand, it's, it's like nothing else. Um, you know, people, people are, you know, kids getting drafted out of high school or going away for the first time, you know, kids from college are so used to their college programs and such structure where, you're controlled by a coach where I feel right. like pro ball is a little bit more individual based. Um, and it's kind of on you to do all those things that maybe your coach had you do as a player in college. So um, it's going to be super valuable and interesting to see, you know, what it grows into. There's probably a, 
just uh, how close are you to Frederick? Frederick's got yeah, a team very, right yep. up the road, right? 30 minutes. Yeah. So there, there's going to be one you get out to the, catch a game, maybe even have something to do with it here someday. Yeah, not for sure. It was super cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think, I mean, I, I also think that it's going to cause some damage to the, you know, Cape, you know, Coastal Plains League, you know, those big, the Ripken baseball, you know, like yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I think they'll still get the guys. It just won't be, you know, you won't have great, the, the competition or the talent won't be as good now because you're going to, you're going to trim off the top 10% or 25, yeah. 25%. I'm, I don't want to leak information that I don't know for sure. Um, but you know, from what I heard, you know, the draft league's trying to become what the Cape has been for so long. Right. Uh, you know, and, and that's what I said. Like, that's what you can kind of see the writing on the wall. That's what that it, it it's got a possibility. Um, sure. I I'm, just don't I, know how, like how intimate, you know, again, the word intimate, but like how, you know, cause like the Cape and all like those was so much so intimate, you know, and guys just love that experience. So, you know, pro well, yeah, pro it, stuff isn't like that, you know, it's, I don't right, know. but again, not Just, that it can't be. Right, the, the biggest thing that I took from it was that they're trying to make the draft league as much of a professional lifestyle as it can be, mm-hmm. as a preparation for, you know, the players that they want to attract to that league are going to be the guys that move on to play in the professional ranks, and it's, it's um. I think it's valuable. It's never been done. It's, um, you know, people have tried to do it. I know my time in in summer ball was, was a way different experience than what I experienced in college. Um, I honestly wasn't ready for it when I, when I went down to playing the coastal plains league, I didn't know what I was getting myself into and I was way in over my head. Um, but it was good for me because I learned so much from it, you know, not knowing what I was getting myself into. So there's good and bad with both, but, um, I definitely would have liked to have a little bit of a heads up to, to know what I was starting to tackle, you know, going into that. But um, that just kind of seems to be what the draft league's going to be. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, I'm just, it's just, I think you were definitely smart to kind of hook your wagon to the PBR train, you know, like it's, it's definitely going in the right direction. And, you know, it's been great for kids. I mean, honestly, like it's just, you know. Yeah, I mean, outside of, you know, I just think it's helping, awesome. what's that? I was thinking just not just so much the kids as much as like you're helping coaches. Like you're just helping, you're, you're really helping coaches as well. Recruit. and Especially you know. nowadays. Yeah. Um, you're just you know, super Division cool. one coaches are put on halt and, you know, they can only do so much. And now you're, and then your job as an assistant with pot state, you know, you're a first hand of like, Hey, coach little, here's a guy that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah, there's that side of it too, where, you know, yeah, I'm I'm with PBR, but I'm going out and watching three, four high school games a week in right. good areas with with a lot of talent and seeing kids that, you know, I saw a kid a couple of weeks ago that he's never been to a PBR event. And he's 85, 87, topping at 88, and he's an unsigned senior. And it's like, where has this kid been? Um, you know, so it's it's funny how kids can fly under the radar. And, oh yeah. You know, maybe he just developed real, real quick there and had a big jump. But, um, yeah, I mean, seeing all kind of kids and seeing kids that are, you know, 14, 15 years old signed with Division One programs that when I was 14 and 15, I don't even know if I was playing on a full-size baseball field yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I know these, I kids are, these kids are, these kids are signed to go to ACC and SEC schools, which I don't, I wasn't ready for that at their age good for them and and it's it's fun to watch but it is it is it's good for them hopefully things work out yeah it's just yeah it's just it's few and far between yeah yeah definitely well, you're, good for you're, them. Getting, you're getting into it now i mean with what you yeah. with what you're doing now and you know you're gonna start hopefully the majority of your guys are ending up getting offers and you know committing here in the next two or three years that's kind of the the route it seems to be going. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Just just to, like you said, help serve kids and help them get them find the best fit and best thing for their family. Yeah, for sure. Love it. I'd love to be able to help. But yeah. man, it's been great, buddy. I, I can't thank you enough, man, for the time. 
and uh, wish you the best. Uh, keep it going, even in your young career. Um, but I'm sure the great things will be ahead, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I enjoyed it. This was good. this was good. I, I I enjoyed doing stuff like this. Coach Andrew Koala from Potomac State Community College and running PBR in New York and Pennsylvania. Just great conversation. Can't thank him enough for his time and all his passion that he brings to the game. Uh, really fortunate, again, to know some really good guys. And, and it just, again, just the theme right now, just getting to know some really good assistant coaches. These are second, the guys that aren't – these are guys in the back – in the trenches, getting it done. And uh, like I said, you don't have quality programs without having these guys that are to surround you in the trenches that are about kids, they're about the program, they're about other people. And you hear it, and you, you hear him say, this is about the kids, it's about getting them seen, it's about serving others. And so uh, it's just a great, great to hear, and I can't thank him enough. I, I love the thing how he talked about how everybody has a different story with recruiting. Everybody has their own. There's no two recruiting stories that are the same. Just so true. Um, you know, and it's just, I think the valuable information we talk about recruiting with having a showcase video, like definitely going to PBR now, some type of showcase video, like here's what my max outputs are. Yep, it is a max output. It's just showing what we have in the tank because you have to get projected. And then two is you definitely have to have some in-game footage. So let's show that you can play the game. Okay. Um, just to make that part of that. So I just thought that was a very valuable content. Love that part of it. Uh, again, follow him at Koala Bear 126 at K O W A L O B E A R 126. DMs are open. Uh, continue to look him up on a PBR website for his email. Uh, reach out to him. Like I said, his DMs are open. Great way to contact with him. And, um, Great guys, always looking to continue to promote the game and do it the right way. So, um, again, Coach Andrew Koala, can't thank you enough, man. Keep rocking it. Uh, you got a great career ahead of you, buddy. So, until next week, thanks for coming along. Please share the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep getting better. <laughs>